Trifecta, money, morals, and culture. That's my leisure. In the second line, Kendrick says, Trifecta, money, morals, and culture. That's my leisure. And again, he's, he's speaking as he's talking as in Drake. Again, this has nothing to do with Kendrick. As yeah, he's, he's talking. He's rapping like he's Drake. Like, yeah, I get it. Yeah, he's, he's not talking about himself. He's, he's, he's rapping like as if he's Drake. See it. I, I see it. I never caught on to that. Wow. 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 As he continues to rap as Drake here. First off, the definition of a trifecta pertains to gambling on horses, where to win, you need to guess the three winning horses yeah. in order. That means that in the case of this line, money would come first, morals would come second, and culture will be last. This is how we can easily rule Kendrick's own perspective out, as money is definitely not his first priority. Again, it's little things like this where it's clear to me that he's not rapping from his own perspective here. Really, money really don't make me, I'm learning that now. You know, that's not really my, um, my peace of mind, having money. In the case of the line as it pertains to Drake, money is seemingly at the forefront of everything that he does. Yeah. He's willing to put aside morals and culture to get it. Yeah. This explains why morals and culture... And his gambling problem. With his gambling problem, which Kendrick also talked about. He talked about he, he has a gambling problem. Come in second and third place within the trifecta. At the end of the day, those two things will never really matter for Drake, as money will always dictate his every move regardless. So, I mean, when we look at a trifecta by definition, like what it means, the line makes literally no sense pertaining to Kendrick. My visa passport tatted, I show up in a visa. Once again, I'm not sure how this would ever pertain to Kendrick, as he never raps about shit like this, and there's no documented proof that he has ever been to Ibiza. Not only that, Ibiza is known as the party capital of Europe, which doesn't really seem to be a place that fits into his lifestyle. When we look at how Kendrick structured and set off this first verse, it only makes sense from Drake's perspective as he was in Ibiza on that exact same yacht. And Drake has referenced Ibiza in his music many, many times. Bro, how does he pay attention to all of this? Wow. 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 We went to Ibiza. And this whole infatuation <laughs> with, with Ibiza for Drake, this is new. He never talked about it before in his music. It's only these recent wow. years where he's been bringing it up a lot. It's almost like Ibiza has become Drake's new favorite hub. And if you listen to how Kendrick enunciates this line, that's exactly what he says. That's your hub in Ibiza, your hub in Ibiza. And I don't know why Drake loves Ibiza so much, but maybe Kendrick does. And again, in very recent times, Drake referenced a tatted passport in his music. To my visa passport tatted. So this all. <laughs> wait, you wait. You telling me Kendrick is dissecting different lyrics in Drake's songs? He's putting all this shit. How do you do that? This nigga taking. All ties and flows perfectly together in reference to Drake and how he lives his life. And given the fact that Kendrick rapped from Drake's perspective on Buried Alive, and this track is called 616 in LA, which was the date that they first met and the concept of that record, Kendrick is doing the same here. And the concept of the Buried Alive track is just as important for Family Matters, which we are doing next. Kendrick continues to replicate the subject matter that Drake showcases on these timestamp records. If you heard Drake say a line like this straight from his mouth, you wouldn't second guess it as it fits perfectly into the style of his pen. He nailed it. It is bang on how Drake raps on these tracks. He's definitely, yeah, because he does that. Damn, damn, damn. Bang on. It's just the way he... Yeah, he does. He does do that. Oh, my God. Oh, now he ate shit. It's very cryptic. Like he doesn't even say pizza. He says pizza. Just to book me some pizza. And book me some pizza is weird too. Like it's yeah. Holy There's shit in here that Drake is only gonna get. And on Euphoria, remember, Kendrick said that he hates the way that Drake sneak disses people. I hate the way that you sneak diss. If I catch flight, it's gonna be direct. 
And what Kendrick means by that is Drake will diss someone and only his intended target will pick up on it. And due to the fact that Kendrick is mirroring his style and writing from Drake's perspective on a timestamp titled record, this first verse is riddled with shots at Drake that only he understands. And that's why the beginning of this record doesn't even sound like a diss, because he's writing in a style of Drake. There's no clear shots to us, but he's dissing Drake the way that Drake disses. And because Drake has been at this pizzeria in Brooklyn before, this is just another clue that Kendrick has given us that he's writing this verse from Drake's perspective. God, ha, my confession is yours. And now we get to the point where I feel Kendrick does indeed switch perspectives back to himself, as it's at this moment where he starts to sing, and when you think about Drake's timestamp records, he doesn't really sing on those tracks at all. God, ha, my confession is yours. Now, I saw that people tried to paint this line as if Kendrick was conflicted on whether or not he should go to war with Drake, but honestly, Kendrick has wanted this battle with Drake for a very long time. But who am I if I don't go to war? I don't think he's conflicted about the war itself, but he knows where he's about to go with this thing, and he's more or less confessing to God before he even puts his plan into action. Kendrick knows he's about to go on attack, likely committing multiple sins, which will need forgiveness from God. If you pay attention to the way he delivers these lyrics, he's deliberately singing in a very ugly, offbeat, non-sonically pleasing way. God, ha, my confession. This singing style reflects Kendrick's internal chaos. He's holding some guilt as a dark side of him is about to emerge. It's like he's saying, like, I'm sorry, God, like, ahead of time, I'm sorry, but I gotta do this. There's opportunity when living with loss, I discover myself when I'm for sure. Some people thought that this meant Kendrick was worried about losing to Drake, and if he did, he'd learn something from it, but I don't think Kendrick even considered the possibility of losing this battle. I mean, let's be real here, he had this whole thing mapped out. I believe even at this point, he knew he had a winning strategy, like, he knew he was gonna win this thing. I feel that Kendrick knows that he's about to unleash a beast that we haven't seen before, and he's hinting at an internal struggle. When you think about it, Kendrick doesn't have any music in his catalog that resembles the subject matter on these diss tracks. I think the loss that he's talking about is he's about to lose control of himself, right? He's about to lose, he's about to go against everything he stands for, like his faith. However, being a man of God, he knows that the Lord will forgive him, and he knows that going through with this thing will offer an opportunity for even more growth. Raise my hands to a fallen sky, I fantasize to me, jumping planets immortalized, I correspond. So a fallen sky is basically an aftermath of a disaster, and it's here where Kendrick is daydreaming about the results of the war. He dreams of jumping planets and becoming immortalized as he's fantasizing about how a victory over Drake would cement his name in the hip-hop history books. And Kendrick... Kendrick's a rapper's rapper. Like, he's a hip-hop, hip-hop guy. And a lot of our legends had, had beefs, right? So I'm sure he's thought about adding a beef to his resume. He had to. These thoughts are so strong for Kendrick that they overpower his own faith. And it's here where he really decides that he needs to go through with it. He truly confirms this when he says, I correspond, meaning he needs to fulfill this fantasy. So I feel like he's daydreaming about like destroying Drake and getting him out of here and how that'll feel. And then he snaps out of it. And he says to himself, I gotta do this. I gotta go through with it. I correspond. Three angels watching me all the time. Kendrick claims that he has three angels watching him. And for anyone who's familiar with Christianity, you will be well aware of Michael, Gabriel, and Raphael. These are the three main angels chosen by God, and each angel represents something different. Given the fact that Kendrick knows he's about to embark on a journey that's testing his faith, he knows that these three angels are with him for guidance on the mission. And guys, he pretty much confirms this by bringing up some of these angels later on in the track. Outside of this biblical reference, in 2013, Kendrick lost three of his close friends, Chad, Pup, and Braze. He mentions these guys on multiple songs, but on a YG record, he makes reference to all three of them. I got a bad car, they kill Braze, they kill Chad, my pick on me, but... From what I could gather, he was really close with all three of these young men, so it's very possible that the three angels is with them is these guys too. So coming off his euphoria disc, Kendrick painted Drake as a deadbeat dad. Kendrick states that Drake is not instilling the same family values as he is, and in this line, he confirms that putting his kids to sleep with a prayer gives them 100% peace. This is all he seems to need. With Drake's kid, it's almost like he wants them to be just as famous as he is. Like, almost like the Kardashians' kids or something, right? Where they're all, he's all up in the interviews, he's in the music videos, he's all over social media. Whereas Kendrick, you know, you're hard-pressed to find even a photo of his kids. 
It's just two different parenting styles. We could say at a minimum. Tell me who gonna stop me. I come from love. Kendrick makes a reference to himself as he moves with love, strong morals, and integrity. And by living this way, he feels unstoppable. In contrast, as we heard on Euphoria, he doesn't feel like Drake has the same values at all. So in Kendrick's mind, this is like a battle of good versus evil. Estelle, cover my heart, then open me up. So Kendrick refers to someone by the name of Estelle. Now it's not 100% confirmed, but this appears to be his grandmother. And when claiming that she covers his heart, he's alluding to her offering him protection. And I really tried to confirm who she is in relation to Kendrick. I went through his family tree, or I tried to, very private. Like Drake's family tree, you can trace back to the 1800s, but Kendrick's is on lock and key, like there's nothing there. But when it comes to Estelle, he's mentioned her before. There's also the fact that during Coachella, he had her name on his custom boots, where it clearly reads Estelle Oliver. Estelle Oliver on his mother's side. So I believe this is his grandmother. Remember when picked up a pin, never said I can trust Timmy so staring at me racks and where I was from. Kendrick appears to be reminiscing on a simpler time. When he first picked up the pen. Why why would um if Drake knows how surgical and how incredibly detailed this, yo, I wouldn't, nah, bro. nah, I'm not messing with nobody. Like, nah, bro, I ain't got time to be going to war with a nigga like this, man. No, me, you know what? You got it. You know, hey, man, the, the better. The the better man, the better man is just gonna win. I'm just gonna stick to singing and you know turning up the club. I know Drake, bro. You cannot it, Drake. Please don't make it. Didn't didn't DJ Academic? Drake! <laughs> Drake! So in fanfic super shattered one dollar and ninety nine cents. Drake is not like that. He not like us. Nah, nah, ain't nobody like this. Fuck that, that nigga. Kendrick ain't like nobody. Fuck, he ain't like us. He ain't like me. You what? What? How does one do this? Nah, this nigga ain't like nobody. Fuck us. No, 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 I'm I'm not I'm not going to war with nobody like this. No, you you got too much time on your hand. Nah, I gotta mm -mm. no, no, no. Nigga, Kendrick ain't like nobody. I've never seen no one this calculated, this detailed, this strategic. This is different. This is this something else. This is something else. I mean, as much detail as Kendrick has within his titles of the songs, the the art cover, the way the fucking ten seconds in the in the music video is just a weird noise. That means something from the producer, from the beat. From the hook, from like everything means something, and, and then it all just like, how do you do that? And you and you wonder why this nigga only dropped one one album every ten years. Shit, it takes him uh two months to make one song. Shit, you know how much research you gotta do for all of this? Yeah, he he can't just get in the booth and just. just it, this shit takes time, so no wonder this make he. So no wonder he make a one album every ten years, man. Jesus, this is <laughs> not. And then you got academics over there talking about ooh the way that Drake sneak disses is ooh did, did, did not just uh. I just I just played a clip of, of DJ Academia talking about, ooh, the way that Kendrick Lamar sneak disses. Uh, oh, no, no. He said, ooh, the way that Drake, you know, uh, positions the sneak. Ooh, this is, man, get the fuck out of here. Um, Where's that? Where's that? 
where's that that I I seen? It was um where was it? Let me go and see if I can find it in my history. Where was it? Something about academics. Where was it? God damn it. Where was it? Let me see if I can find it. This nigga over here. Ooh, the way that Drake. I'ma see myself. Why you pulling like a bitch, ain't you? Trying to strike a chord. And it's probably. Yeah, here we go. Drake? <laughs> Drake? <laughs> Zero well, actually, fanfic no. super shattered one dollar well, no, ninety nine cents. Like, it's- Act like the way Drake finesse his phone lyrics. <laughs> For real, man. So so wait. So hold on. Appreciate that one dollar. So so wait. Academics, you over here? Ooh, the way that Drake, you know, he positioned the sneak this. Ooh, so you fascinated by what Drake doing, but you ain't fascinated by this, but what he's doing. He he over here gassing the shit out of Drake. Listen to this. It's never over. It's really never over. Okay. Like I can't wait to hear the first sneak diss. Matter of fact, I don't even tell y'all what I heard. But, 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 but I can't wait to hear the first sneak diss Drake got that's dissing Kendrick, how he positions it. That's gonna be interesting. How does he position it? Pause, pause, extra pause on. You talking about how he positioned it. Well, what about this? Pause, no diddy. You over here talking about Drake is an ABC rapper. When it comes to goddamn Kendrick, Kendrick is is algebra honors level. Like this nigga, man, come on, but there, there is no competition, man. It is two different math levels. All right, uh, Drake over here, one plus one, and all right, two minus two and shit. This nigga over here, he on calculus algebra. Uh, man, he's in honors. Uh, he's man, this is different. This is two different levels, man. This is two different levels. This is wow. I didn't know Kendrick. Well, I mean, I knew Kendrick was a intelligent person, and, and I, I knew he was. But this is different. I didn't know that he had this in him. Pause. No, Diddy. This is this is impressive. I'm just I'm, this is impressive. Wow. <laughs> 